Okay, chapter 11, number, forget already, I'm not finding it, number 11, I think, yes, number 11. Uh, here we have a framework, and we're um, given some hypothetical events, and this in this world, all else won't be held constant. We're going to have two things change at a time. So, uh, the first case, letter A, let me read it, and then I'll show you how I've done it on my whiteboard. Uh, most workers in this nation's, are, nation's economy are union members, and unions have successfully negotiated large wage boosts. At the same time, economic conditions suddenly worsen abroad, reducing real GDP and disposable income in other nations around the world. Okay, so our determinants for aggregate supply and aggregate demand, I've really focused on the long-run aggregate supply determinants, and I actually think that's adequate but I can expand on it. So our determinants are nine uh, for, let's start with AD, C, I, G, and N, X. For aggregate supply, I'm just gonna write A, S and leave it to you to infer whether we're talking short run and myself as we interpret these, short run or long run. Um, these are labor, capital, Human capital, natural resources, all improved by technology. I think I might have switched my usual order there. But this is our production function. So these are the things that make the vertical line happen. Short-term effects around these would shift the diagonal or the upward sloping short-run aggregate supply curve. So in the case of the first one, union workers are demanding higher wages. So the threat would be to strike. Now, of these nine determinants, what does that sound like? I'm thinking that sounds like labor, but it's not a long-term thing because those workers, those resources are really there. It's a short-term thing because they're threatening to strike for higher wages or higher costs in the short term, but the workers are still present. So we're talking with the first part of A about a decrease in short-run aggregate supply, and this is a decrease in short-run aggregate supply, so something like this for letter A, and then at the same time, uh, foreign countries, uh, what was the situation again? They have less disposable income in, in nations outside of the country we're looking at. Now, I think that's pretty clear which of the nine determinants that is. That's NX, right? It's under aggregate demand, which is, this is exports minus imports. If the people who buy from a country don't have as much disposable income, they're going to be buying less, right? So it's going to decrease aggregate demand. So we're talking about drawing a decrease in aggregate demand in addition to our decrease in supply, because that's how the world is. Sometimes not one thing is, not just one thing is happening in the world. So this, this is aggregate demand for letter A. That's the new short run aggregate supply for letter A. So in the short run, where are they intersecting? They're intersecting here. Well, if I look at this model, uh, then the point that's like that is letter E. So the answer for A is E. That's just where it is in the model in the textbook. He's just saying there. I would have probably said, what does that mean for the price level? It's indeterminate. We don't know for sure if that's going up or down. What does that mean for, here, could you answer this? What does this mean for unemployment? Unemployment is almost certainly high because output is falling from both things. So our GDP is way down here now. What it does at the price level is, uh, you know, we, we had some questions with supply and demand where we moved two things at one time like this, and that's sometimes that's how things are. Letter B, a major hurricane has caused short-term halts in production at many firms and created major bottlenecks in the distributions of goods and services that, is, that has been produced prior to the storm. At the same time, the nation's bank has significantly pushed up the rate of growth of the nation's money supply. Okay, so the, um, the first thing is a restriction of goods and services or some obstruction of goods and services getting out. It's not the long-term capacity to produce goods and services kind of thing like long-run aggregate supply. So we're talking about a short-run change. So what we're talking about is things aren't getting out temporarily. So this line we can also use for letter B. It's a decrease in the short run of aggregate supply. So this is the short run aggregate supply curve now for A and B. And at the same time, 
and presumably it would be to address this. Um, uh, the, the, the Fed, or central, the central bank of the country, has increased the money supply, right? Pushed up the rate of growth of the nation's money supply. They've made money less scarce. That makes it less valuable, all else held constant, and the value of money is proxied by the interest rate. So we've effectively lowered interest rates and made it cheaper to borrow money and less beneficial to keep money saved. That should increase aggregate demand. So now we're talking about a new aggregate demand curve that I haven't drawn, something like this for letter B. So the aggregate demand curve for letter B, meeting with the short run aggregate supply curve for letter B, is here, which for output means indeterminate or roughly where we started, but we certainly, they both have upward pressure on prices, so the price level should be higher or using the points the way the author identified them in the question, uh, there, that's like letter B. That would be B for B. More important is Y, because when this comes up in Pearson, my lab, I don't know, you know, these things could be rearranged uh, in a number of ways, so we have to know how we get there more than just that A is this and B is that, you know. Okay, letter C, a strengthening of the value of this nation's currency in terms of other currencies affect both the short-run aggregate supply curve and the short-run aggregate demand curve. Um, so, sorry, I'm looking at this. Uh, okay. So this is a tricky one. Um, using the way I approach this, I have to say that's this is a tricky one. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to explain it a little more than I probably would like to. It's just a little trickier using thinking of our nine determinants because the strengthening of our currency, the most immediate effect when our currency strengthens that we feel in the U.S. I I think uh, unless you deal in commodities is uh, just recalling, we're, we're talking about the strength of a currency, so I'm immediately going to net exports because of these things. That's what's most directly going to be impacted with currency, with exchange rates, right? So this is exports minus imports, right? Now, if our currency is stronger relative to other currencies, that means our dollar can buy more of their euro or their bot or their yen, and until their prices adjust, we can buy more of their stuff. So that's going to raise imports and or simultaneously, it's going to um, decrease our exports because now it takes uh, those countries, a person there who's getting paid in those currencies, it takes them more of their wages to buy our dollar, to buy a dollar denominated good. So we're talking about a definite decrease in net exports with this currency fluctuation, right? So that our decrease in net exports, we're talking under demand, so we're talking about a decrease in aggregate demand. So for um, letter C, we're going back to this curve that we went to with A. So this is going to be our aggregate demand curve for letters A and C. But we are shifting two things here at one time, and this is the part that I don't have a great explanation for as to like, hey, this is this is a, this is one of the nine determinants, and it's crystal clear. A lot of what we get here is from abroad as well. Our natural resources we can import. So since we can import our natural resources, and our currency is stronger, we can buy more of those. I hope that makes sense. That's not as clear as I'd like it to be, but it's about as clear as I can think to make it right now. Um, so we can buy more natural resources because of the currency thing, which is not us discovering more resources. It's just a greater ability to buy them. That's why it's not going to shift our long run aggregate supply curve, just our short run aggregate supply curve. And it's going to shift it to one that I've not drawn somewhere like this. Uh, by my experience, so like say in our economy, I, when this happens, I don't hear of this effect. So I would guess it wouldn't be that big of a jump, but I really don't know. 
So now we're going to be at a short run aggregate supply curve out here for letter C. And so for letter C, this aggregate demand curve and this aggregate supply curve intersect here. So we don't know for sure exactly where we'll fall on our output change, but with both effects, we're definitely going to have downward pressure on prices. In your text, that corresponding point is letter C in the model he gives in the textbook. So uh, I hope that clarifies that, and I hope it equips you to deal with these things if they were slightly different variable changes or different directions.